Hey everybody, I uh, hope you had a great weekend. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us again. We're here with Miss Linda getting prepared and ready to start the live stream session for today, which will be some drawing and some embellishments. So I'm going to give you, like usual, a couple of minutes to get yourself organized, to get some materials in case you haven't done that already. Um, today you're going to need some construction paper or white paper, scissors, tape, markers, crayon, and some crayons and a pencil would be helpful. Um, and a Sharpie marker, because I think Miss Linda really likes Sharpie markers. So uh, while you guys get those things put together, gathered, and, and maybe getting your little ones settled and, and prepared, I'm going to talk about the rest of this week's schedule. Tomorrow, Tuesday, March 31st, we're going to be finishing off those paper mache projects that we started at Pigeon Hill with Miss Mary Pat. Uh, she's going to show you how to use Sharpie markers, uh, regular markers, paper, pencil, paint, stickers, anything you can think of that you would like to put onto your paper mache projects to color them, finish them off, make them more interesting. Um, she'll be coming live from Pigeon Hill Studio tomorrow at 1 o'clock from 1 to 2. Wednesday, April 1st is going to be a really special, special episode. It's going to be something that we've never done before. It's going to be really interesting. So I invite you to join us in illustrating or joining us just to hear. I have uh, a young lady by the name of Fiona Noster coming to read out loud to us. She's going to read some children's books. And while she's reading the books, I myself and Ryan Decker are going to be drawing what we picture in our mind's eye. So you can join us just to listen or you can participate along with us, whatever you choose. It should be a lot of fun. Thursday, April 2nd, we are going to host a mask making workshop with Nancy Hirschberger. She's going to guide us expertly through the mask making process so that we can sew and create masks that we are going to then donate to hospitals and medical professionals. Um, and that is more of an adult task. However, we're not forgetting the kids either. We're going to include tags of encouragement. So your little ones can participate in helping us make and write little cardboard tags that we're going to attach to the masks of words of encouragement and some words of hope and inspiration that we're going to then pass on to those medical professionals and help boost their morale, help support them a little bit more. And Friday, April 3rd, will be Music Makers with instructor Miss Nicole Clark. That is gonna be a lot of fun. She is gonna be coming to you live and helping you make some instruments and some music makers. And then she's gonna teach you how to decorate them. So you definitely don't wanna miss that one either. That is the rest of this week's schedule. Uh, I'd also like to remind you that please send us your work Please send us anything and everything that you're making and creating. I want to see pictures. So take a picture, send it along with your name and your age, if you're comfortable with attaching your age. Um, and we're going to create a slideshow that we're going to scroll through in the museum on the monitors whenever we're open back up to the public. So you don't want to miss that opportunity to be in a museum. Send us your work for sure. And I'd like to share with you my Bob Ross quote, which I think is really uh, inspirational for today. It says, however you think it should be, that's exactly how it should be. So you're the creator, you're the maker. However you make those marks and whatever you're doing, that's exactly the way it's supposed to be. So it's a little bit more encouragement for you to send me some of your work so I can see what you're doing out there. All right, guys, I'm going to turn this over to Miss Linda. Thank you so much, and I'll make some more announcements at the end. All right, Miss Linda. Hi, welcome back. Uh, I don't know if anyone did their homework last week. I asked you to make large eggs and display them on your door or window, but I want to make sure it gets done, so I'm gonna spend a little time on it today. Remember, I told you you draw the large shape this one is not symmetrical. It's this side looks pretty good and this side looks pretty good. But if I fold it in half and cut it out, it's not going to match exactly. And so that's why we fold it in half and cut it out. That way we can change it just a little bit to get the shape we like. And 
if you don't like the shape, cut it again. Look how much different it is. There's, it didn't have this over here. So I'm just gonna turn it over this way and use it as a pattern. And this is what we're gonna be drawing. I'm gonna make it simple. And I'm gonna do it on yellow paper. Remember I told you I loved yellow uh, for drawing with. And this, I won't have to color the egg because the paper is colored. Now, construction paper's great. Uh, this is cardstock, that's great. Or if you don't have any colored paper, do it on the white and then color it all. It's easier, in my opinion, to draw it before you cut it out. And I know this is symmetrical because I folded it in half. Now, remember it helps to start with the pencil. I am going to draw a little circle for this chick's head. You can't see this very well because it's in light pencil. Remember, we always draw light first. Oh, I've started to make this complete circle, but what do I have on top of his head? Yes, part of his eggshell, he just hatched. So if I do that round, it's gonna be hard to draw the eggshell and I want it slightly larger than his head. I think that's kind of cute. So now I can do his head and it'll work. Now, you can go ahead and bring this over or maybe a little broken line to suggest it. I think my marker is a little too fat to do this line for his beak. So I'm going to use this marker that's giving me bits for his beak. And he may be puzzled what's on his head. So I'm gonna draw his eye in here and have him looking up and going like, what's that on my head? Okay, I'm gonna slow down a little bit. It's been brought to my attention that I go kind of fast. And I go kind of fast because I'm used to drawing these things. And a lot of you are new at drawing, so I'll slow down just a little bit. I like my chicks to be plump. I don't, they just look cute to me to That's be all true. round and fluffy. That's true. They are cuter when they're plumper. <laughs> I do like that. While, while we're waiting, I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom of this eggshell. Remember the egg at the bottom is kind of round, kind of flat, and it doesn't matter what you look like, just jagged edges. Will this match up with that? Absolutely not, but we don't care. I like little highlight lines here and there too. You don't have to put them in there. I just kind of like them. Now, because this eggshell is yellow, you might want to color it in with a white crayon. You may, may do it or may not, or you could decide it was a dyed egg and you could color it any color you wanted. Okay, I'm gonna come down for his back, a rounded line and a little turned up chick tail. <laughs> I like that. Ducks have that little, uh, that little flip, that, that little, little flip up too. <laughs> I'm not so sure chicks have that. I think it comes out more down this way, but I like that. So it's my drawing. I have my artistic license. I can change it if I want to. It's exactly the way it's supposed to be. It's exactly. However you make it is exactly the way it's supposed to be. Thank Actually, you, Bob. <laughs> thank you, Bob. It, I like that. It gives us a lot of character too. It's a little, uh, it's a little cute little detail. Yeah. Now, I could make his wings going up, but I think he's kind of resting. I don't know, but I would guess that hatching is a lot of hard work. So I'm just going to suggest his little wing there. Why am I not drawing the other one? Because it's on the other side of the chick. Uh, he has two eyes but it's not Peppa Pig. I don't draw them both on the same side of the head. Uh, it's on the other side of his head. Now birds have knees that go backwards. So my first line, I come this way. Instead of our knee, would come like this. It goes backwards. And I'm gonna give him little chick feet. And little chick feet 
look like this. So one toe goes backwards. I think there's three toes that go forward. I'm not making three toes because the other one is hidden. And if that's the way you did it, if you want to give him three toes, you may. This other one is back a little ways because it's behind. And I don't have room to draw the other toes. I'm just going to suggest them. Now, I've got a bee in there because I like bees and because they're yellow. Okay, I'm going to wait just a minute. Um, I didn't put flowers in this one, but if there's a bee around, there's flowers around someplace. Uh, I kind of try to make it where it's not too girly or too boy. I want to make it more universal so that everybody can enjoy it. And I've done a lot of flowers and I think, and you can see the one that I worked on Friday for the adults is all flowers in a flower box. And I enjoy the flowers, but I want to do something that everybody would think. And I don't think that um, a dog is a boy and a cat is a girl, I don't. And you can draw anything you want if you look at it. That's my opinion and I'm not changing it. It won't look exactly like it unless you practice a lot. But you can get inspiration from everything and draw your version of it. That's great. Now, I went to the smaller marker for the mouth and I'm gonna go to the smaller marker for the wings. You don't have to do that. I'm just suggesting the wings. That looks like a leaf, doesn't it? Have you ever really investigated a bee or a dragonfly or any insect wings? They're very translucent. They're almost completely transparent and they're interesting. So I'm just gonna suggest some little feet on him. And a lot of times they do have that shape of a leaf or they do have yeah. that almost veining that looks like a leaf. Yeah. Very connected. So I, I like to leave them either white or light blue because that's what I like to do. You have to decide what you like to do. What do you think that is? It's starting to come up. but I hire my yard mode. Some people dread when the grass comes up. I like it because I just pay my neighbor to mow it. <laughs> you have someone take care of that grass for you. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't have to mow it. So I do like that. I think we're all ready to start seeing some of that greenery. Oh yeah. Now, You've seen this other one right here. Did you know that those little ladybugs have got wings under that shell that they have? So I don't think they look, I think the shell opens up and I think this is not the proper way to draw it, but I'm going to have the two sets of wings come out. And I think the shell opens up and the wings come out, so that's not proper. You could look it up. Where could you find a picture of a ladybug in flight? online, in a magazine. I like to read National Geographic. They've got the best photographs in some of those things. Absolutely. Best photographs, absolutely. And that's your that's your rendition. That's your idea of the ladybug in flight. And, and it's not wrong. I mean, that's your interpretation. Yeah. Okay, now I'm not putting a lot of other decorations on here, just a little bit. I could add some polka dots here and there if I want to. Remember, this is your example. You can have it look any way you want. Now, I say now a lot. I'm gonna have to break that habit. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> this brighter yellow, I'm just going to put a little bit on it to suggest that he's a little brighter. I'm not coloring him all in yellow because the paper's yellow. That's a very bright orange, but I'm gonna use it anyway. Now, do you, do you see? 
do you see how uh, he's coming together? Remember I talked about how awful it looks to use the markers to fill in a lot of color. So I'm going to use a twistable. It is a, is that one green? It is. And those are crayons? These are crayons and you can find them different places. This is made by Crayola brand. And I'm not sure. But if it didn't have a twistable, a crayon would still work. Probably. Right, it yeah. would. There's the blue I was looking for. Uh, the reason I brought these, what was so handy, they come in a little uh, container and it was easy for me to grab and bring with me. I'm not gonna take the time to color all this in right now. This is the blue and I can color over this background and I don't see a whole lot of difference between this blue and that green. Um, I can get it brighter by putting more pressure on the crayon. I can get it lighter by putting less pressure on the crayon. And I think if you do this, you're leaving a lot of space in between. I think, and why can I scribble over here? Why is that not important? Because I'm going to cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs> Isn't it? Cut it out. Yeah. <laughs> So I can scribble over here, try out a color, uh, do all of that because I'm going to cut it out and put it on my front door. And I would like you to do the same. Yeah, you asked us last week, Miss Linda, to display our eggs. I think that that'd be a great homework assignment for today too, to yes. whatever egg you make, display it outside and brighten up uh, the outside a little bit for people driving past your house or walking have you noticed that some of your neighbors have been out walking as a family it's a good idea because that you're they're still keeping their distance from everybody they're just out walking and I think that's a wonderful idea uh, to get out and enjoy the sunshine enjoy what's going on and um, getting exercise now these are the colored pencil. Notice it's the same brand. It doesn't have to be, but um, I'm looking for a different color that I can use here. Is this one the purple? No, that's blue. This one's the purple. Miss Linda, they also have twistable colored pencils. They have twistable colored pencil? How did I not know this? They're quite nice. I need to go to the, well, it's dangerous for me to go to the art supply part of Walmart or any store because I want to own all the art supplies. I have the same problem, Miss Linda. I have to be very careful when I walk into any craft store. I want to own it all. I want to buy everything I see. <laughs> I know. It, I, it, it's almost a disease. They, I have a very large, extensive uh, color pencil collection, and that it's not necessary. I have enough color pencils to last me a lifetime, and uh, I still enjoy buying them. Right. <laughs> I still enjoy owning them. <laughs> yes, I know. And I have some things called intense sticks, and they're like colored pencils, but they don't have the wood around them. Oh, okay. They look like a chalk pastel. I've never used them. Oh, I need to get them out and make myself use them because they're wonderful. Well, maybe, Miss Linda, we're going to give you homework to get those out and make a piece with that set. I think, I, I think I'll do that. And you'll bring it in and hopefully share it with us and we can take a look and see what that looks like, that type of uh, medium. There's a lot of different ways to color in pictures anymore. I mean, the twistables, the straightforwards, the colored pencils, markers, chalk, paint. There's so many different things. It's difficult to decide sometimes. So and, many options. And even some of the less expensive ones work really well. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I want to say something without mentioning a company that I don't like their stuff. <laughs> well, there's preferences. I have preferences, too. I sometimes, uh, you know, when I really get into using one particular type of something or other, I, li I like to go back to that exact thing so uh, I know what you mean by some you like a lot more than others 
the Crayola brand watercolors are okay. Mm -hmm. And their blue, their blue is really nice. It's this color. It's a teal type of blue. It's really pretty. And I like that. Um, the Krang is one of the best brands you can buy inexpensively. Yes, they're very good pigmentation to their, their coloring ability. Very nice. But do not buy the ones that are $1.98. You're not saving money when you can't use them. That's true. I'm, I'm sorry, you have to spend a little bit of money. They're not terribly expensive. I'm gonna quit coloring that background even though I'm having fun doing it. <laughs> I can tell you're having fun. <laughs> I am going to brighten up this B just by coloring a little bit over that. Okay, take your time and draw your bunny. And when you get it finished, be careful with the scissors. I like these large adult scissors, but you can use child scissors and still do a good job. Notice what I am doing with my paper. I am rotating it as I cut. Because if you try to hold the paper still and take your arm around, you're gonna be <laughs> going crazy. Making funny contorted arm movements. Huh? Yes, and you're gonna get the mouth going weird and the tongue will come out. Um, turn the paper. You can even cut off that big piece right there. Start again. And as you rotate it, you're gonna find it's easier to cut it out. This one is almost ready to go on my front door, but I don't want it to be there all by itself. What I can do is I made a pattern and traced it four times. I could put little ones all around it. I could cut out several of these because my front door is the glass, um, Storm door. Okay, yeah. And I could put it all over there if I want. I could Very nice. I could put a bow on there. So I would like you to decorate your door any way your parents will let you. And just a couple of little pieces of tape will come right off. And decorate those door for doors for all the people that are walking now. I'm sure that they'll yeah. appreciate something to look at. And, and be careful with the scissors. Remember that uh, is an activity that may not be an individual activity. Yes, you I think, need help. yeah, and look how weird this is when I cut it out, but now it's symmetrical because I folded it. Um, I, I had a thought. <laughs> 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 and it kind of went away. That's okay, that happens. Oh, letters. I like to cut out letters and you could cut out Easter and put up there and you could color them in, you could decorate them with flowers, you could decorate them with lines and stripes and polka dots. Absolutely, that would be really cute. But um, the best way to do those is to draw them out big block letters. I don't know if you know what block letters are. Here's an E for Easter. Here's a block letter. This. You try to keep them the same size. Could you use a ruler and do this? Of course you can. That's a block E. Now, if you do it this way, you can make it larger and do it this way, but then it's a little harder to do that middle and you got that line there. It's not a big deal, especially if you put some stripes on it. Make it a part of your pattern. Yeah. You can, remember this is your artwork. You can do anything. I like the striped letters. I think that would be cool. That's very cute, very pretty. Think about what the letter looks like. Let me draw this with them. I make the A wider here and then come down with the other leg of the A. Then when you're ready to make the block letter, you can come in. There's a crossbar here, and then a triangle. You may even be able to find some patterns, or you may have one of those foam um, alphabet puzzles. You can buy them at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. Go, go shopping for them now. <laughs> <laughs> and trace them. And That's trace them. Way. Yeah. When I was taught block lettering, uh, if you make the letter and measure out, and make you like draw a line around the letter. That's how I learned block lettering. Right. 
You mean, well, one of the ways I do it is cut out squares the same size. Yes. And then you fill in, oh, S's are hard. I, I'm not going to put an S in here. Well, I shouldn't say that. S's take concentration. And then you can do the T to kind of fill that in. Um, when you're doing a block S, if you don't have anything to trace, you make a C and a backward C. That's a great way to break that down. A C and a backward C, and then you make it fat. Right here in the middle, you have to kind of split it. And it's not that difficult if you think about it like that. Okay, I am going off on another tangent. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I'm switching gears totally. I want to teach you how to do some monsters. Ooh. I absolutely love monsters. And I think that it's hard for us to have painting lessons when you don't all have paint at home. That's true. And you don't all have brushes that are pretty good at home. So I want to teach you some simple ways to make monsters. And I'm just going to draw them on this paper. And we're going to have a gallery of monsters. Monsters don't have to be mean. They can be happy. They can be silly. They can be goofy. And then if you want to make them mean when you can. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start out. Oh, look. It's a circle. Imagine that. And it's not perfect. That's okay. I'm going to start out with Goofy. I like Goofy monsters. You can make them eyelids. Oh, this is going to look sad. I was going to make him cross-eyed, but I didn't. <laughs> now, they can have very simple noses. But I like to have big mouths. And re see, now he looks a little sad. I'm going to make him have goofy teeth. Look, his big teeth are off to the side. Maybe these are a little larger over in here. Now, when you're doing this, if you color in a dark color, all of a sudden, the teeth are going to show up. The next one I do, I'll do it a little differently so you can see the tongue. I like to do tongues, too. The dark make the teeth show up. Maybe he is an alien monster. He's <laughs> got some antenna. Maybe he is a slug blown up big or something. This could be a caterpillar head. But he's not going to be a normal monster. I'm going to put his legs right here. Remember, two lines for the legs. And he's going to have stripes on his legs just because I want him to. <laughs> Maybe that's his fancy socks. Maybe that's his coloration. Do insects and animals have camouflage? Yes. They certainly do. They do not want to become lunch for anybody. Uh, what is this insect doing, or monster doing, wearing tennis shoes? Because I wanted him to. <laughs> And that is not drawn well as tennis shoes, but it's enough information that you know what it is. I'm going to have to give him some kind of arms. Let's have him come out here and give him little funny fingers. Oh, they're like frog fingers. Yeah. I don't know what he's doing. He's waving at you. And he only has three fingers. To me, he looks like he's telling a story where he caught a fish and it was this <laughs> big. It was this big. <laughs> well, does, does he always tell the truth? Maybe he does. 
Maybe he doesn't. <laughs> okay, let me stop and think another. Oh, this one's going to have horns. I'm going to draw just the top of his head here because I haven't decided the shape of the rest of his head. He might be singing a song. It's at the end of the song. You don't need some spirit fingers. Oh, that's a great suggestion. He might be singing a song at the very end of the song. He's belting it out and doing some spirit fingers. Maybe so. I can hear that. Jazz hands. <laughs> what would the note sound like, Michael? That's a good one. <laughs> now, I've got to plan out what this monster looks like. Sometimes I give my monsters more of a human nose. So this is kind of hard when I'm planning it out right in front of you because I don't always know what it's going to look like. That's not a total circle. And this nose is a C and a backward C. And then I make big nostrils. Miss Morgan, do you know I figured out why children, when they draw heads, put great big black nostrils in the middle? No, why? Because they're looking up at you and they see these two oh, big it's black perspective. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that makes sense. That makes a lot more sense. <laughs> I finally figured it out. Now, look at these teeth. And maybe he's got big black lips or big red lips, you decide. Okay, what kind of eyes? Big ones. And he's looking down at you. I think this monster would be tall if I gave him a body. Okay, ears. Now he kind of looks like, I don't know. Oh, I like his hair. He's kind of got a mohawk going on. He does. <laughs> I don't know what kind of, um, now I'm putting the iris in, the iris in, because then I can decide what color it is. Remember, you do not have to use standard eye colors. I would be scared if I met a monster with red eyes. Maybe they glow in the dark. That's true. So I think he looks like he's he's nervous about something. He doesn't look like a scary monster to me. He looks like a, a nervous monster. <laughs> I could reference a movie, but most of our audience hasn't seen Monsters Incorporated because it's an <laughs> old one. It is now, and that's sad. It's a really great film. It but, is. Uh, yeah, I can I understand what you're saying there, but yeah. Okay, I don't know what kind of body he's going to have. I think I'll just draw some more heads to give you more ideas. I'm going, oh, look at this. What are all those black dots? Your Sharpie. My Sharpie went through and it left black dots on this piece of paper. I can take this piece of paper and turn it over. It's clean enough to draw on, it's not trash. I'm gonna draw mean eyes. I like to do these. This could look like an owl right now. But when you do the eyebrow, and when I draw these, I find myself scrunching up my face. <laughs> and I get kind of mean looking at the time when I draw them. I'm gonna give him kind of a human no Oh, this looks like Gonzo or something. I don't know if you watch the Muppets or something. He, or um, Gargamel or something like that. <laughs> yeah, if he's, if he's a villain, he has to have a wart. Well, since he's scowling, he must be the villain. Yeah. These two lines right between the eyebrows make him look more sinister, meaner. And I'm going to give him an evil grin. <laughs> when we're doing cartoons like this, you're the master. You get to decide 
what they look like. And he's going to have the other side of his mouth right here, but right there is what? That's his tongue. It would help if I drew it red, wouldn't it? Okay, I, I like to just experiment and see what I come up with. Another one of those. It can have hair coming out of it, too. Oh, he's going to have a cleft chin. <laughs> now, your ear on a normal person is even with the eyes. And if you don't believe that's true, think about glasses. When you put on sunglasses or prescription glasses, they come straight back from the eye to the ear. But if we're drawing monsters, it can have any kind of ear you want. You can give it the shape of a normal ear. You can make them pointed. You can make them round. This little guy doesn't look, he doesn't have any ears. I'm gonna give him little monkey ears. He's got little monkey ears. Ooh, I think he needs villain hair. <laughs> now, if I were gonna give him any kind of body, it would I don't like that line at all. If I don't like it, what could I do? I could come in here and change it. I like that better and I could color the background in, and that gets rid of it. But if you're gonna do that, you need to make it neat, and, or you could trim it off, and that's where your paper would end. There are artist tricks that you can do to change it. I could make this into something else. Right now, it does, nothing comes to mind, but I could think of something. But you can also wait till a little bit later. You might be inspired the more you draw in a different part. Right, save but that for later. I do like that much better mm -hmm. when I erase that box. You can't erase the marker, but no. you can get rid of it. That's true. I could make an interesting background to go back there. But I'm going to come straight down from here and straight down here. And this is going to be a small neck for somebody that big. And I'm going to give him an arm. Do you know what that would be? You could make a hand holding it. It could be a cell phone. That black. Ah! <laughs> it could be. <laughs> He's evilly laughing on the cell phone. <laughs> you know what? I was making short sleeves. And then it, this got wider here. So what am I changing it to? Stripes. Yeah. Who says that I can't change my mind in the middle? Because I didn't like the way that that flared out. Now I'm going to give him a big thumb and some big fingers. And I don't have to draw them all because I'm running out of uh, room right here. And he doesn't have to have four fingers and a thumb unless I want him to. Maybe it, next, Miss Linda, you could show us more of a girly monster. A girly monster? I could do that. I could do a self-portrait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, I, I haven't drawn everything, but I filled up my paper. I was actually going to put more than one monster on here, and I got involved in drawing this and I was making him up as I went along. Well the villain that he is he took up the whole piece. <laughs> he did. Okay let me think. A girly monster. Let me stop and think for a minute. We don't want to do a witch because. Well that's that's predictable, isn't it? Yeah, we it's can predictable. Be more creative than that. Maybe one that's based off of um, a ladybug. The ladybug you drew. Maybe it's the ladybug monster or fluffy thing. A, like a, a fluffy. Yeah, ball. something fluffy. It's a great suggestion. I think she's gonna. It looks like she's gonna be a little froggy looking. Yeah, that's a great idea. 
She's gonna have her tongue out. <laughs> and I think I may give her hair. I'm trying to decide. Oh, she doesn't look monstery at all. I have to do something to make her look more monstery. Let me think what I could do. I don't want to make her look mad. Maybe she has horns. She could have horns. She, let me just draw in her eyes. I want to make them more rounded than I got that. I'm chasing, changing where I'm putting the eyeballs. And there's those lashes, they're beautiful. You know, boys have eyelashes too. That's true. Maybe she only has eyelashes on one eye. <laughs> Right, and monsters, their eyes don't have to match. I'm gonna make her look more tired. That kind of makes them look tired. Um, hmm. The tongue got longer too. <laughs> That would be good if she was a frog because they have that tongue that darts out and catches things. What do they catch? Flies. Flies. Hmm, I don't know that frog have teeth, so I'm getting rid of that. I was leaving teeth in there, but I don't think frogs have teeth. I think they swallow their things hold. Oh, she's looking a little bit more froggy. I'm not going to give her, ah, look what I'm going to do. That makes her look more froggy, doesn't it? Okay. Sometimes when you're doing drawings, you don't have to color everything. You just color a little bit to suggest what's going on. And I decided to make her eyes bigger. There we go. And I'm just gonna draw nostrils. <laughs> She's pretty cute. So I could give her one of these froggy hands, couldn't I? I could give her froggy feet. Because if I was going to draw the body, I would come out here. Okay. Do you want some more heads or do you want me to make her body? Let's keep going with the heads. I think that that's a good way to show the variation and how different monsters can be. Okay. Let me think. This is one of the monsters that I have drawn more than once. And he's one of my favorites. He's going to be more animal-like, isn't he? If this is a nose, he's going to be more animal-like. Hmm. Sometimes you have to stop and think where you want things to go. I like nice and dark up here. I'm not sure which direction I want the eyes to be looking. Do you have it? Are they crazy eyes? Maybe one's down and one's up? They could be. They're googly eyes. Or I have this one way off over here. Yeah. You can't get away from him because he can see where you go. And I'm going to come in and make some little eye. Uh, not with this. <laughs> can I help you with that one? Be careful, it's a paint pen. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to splash on you. You're welcome. 
I may not have room up here to draw everything, but you can get enough with just this one side. Have you figured out what he is yet? When I draw him carefully and slowly, I color in his fur with lots of black lines. And when I make his eyes really evil, he looks like a werewolf. So I'm gonna come in here with some cheeks in there. That helps. Those cheeks help make him look more werewolfy. Is that a word? <laughs> I like it. If it's not, it is now. <laughs> Werewolfy is a good one. Yeah, it is. <laughs> we, his nickname is Big Bad. <laughs> <laughs> I like the stories, though, where Big Bad Wolf does not win. Okay, I'm almost finished with him. And then the other ear would come up here, so you can't see it, it's behind the frog lady. Okay, he is kind of mean looking. I also like to make some of the lines thicker than others. That's not something you have to do, but when you change the width of the lines, it's more interesting. Notice that that one marker I was using was getting a little dry, so I just switched. And when you make this look a little thicker and change that, I think it helps it. So here, <laughs> that's funny the way they overlap. There's the big bad wolf and the frog lady. Okay, maybe a cartoon that looks cute. I think a cute one would be a good idea. And you have about 15 minutes, Miss Linda. 15? Mm-hmm. See, when I get started like this, I lose track of time. Time flies. And I, um, I gotta do something different with this one. I think. I'm going to make this one really different. I've seen one kind of like this before, but I'm not copying anything. Once you see something and it stays in your mind, then it's kind of easier to come up with it, if you know what I mean. I'm not copying anybody else's artwork, but you, you might say, oh, well, I've seen something that looks just like that. Well, you might have. Everything that you see influences you. So this is going to be a great big eye. There was some movie where there were monsters that look kind of like this. Their eyes were on stalks. And there was a boy one and a girl one and they look kind of like this. <laughs> they make me laugh. Now, do I think that this monster, and see, I changed that line. I don't have to use the line that I drew over here. I can change it. Okay. She's got nostrils, because everybody needs to breathe. And... I don't know what I want to do in there. Maybe she flies the spaceship and wears a uniform. I don't know. I do know though, she's got weird fingers.
<laughs> Are you wanting me to wrap this up? It's up to you. I, I'm enjoying what your creations you're creating on the spot. I'm I'm actually really enjoying watching you do it. And I was wondering how many fingers she was going to have. I was thinking, oh, if we go into like 12 or 15 fingers, she is going to have some very strange looking hands. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you need to decide um, when you're doing these things what the purpose of them. This is some kind of puffy uniform. Uh, that's the insignia. I don't know what it is. I just put a little bit of lines on it. But does she have a weapon in her hand? Does she have uh, an alien hot dog? Oh. Does she have whatever? I don't know. That would be interesting. Um, I think she eats weird food. So, if I come up here with her hand and give her a hot dog, let me see here. I don't think I want to have lunch with her because there's legs coming out of her sandwich. <laughs> I'm sure where she's from, that's very normal. <laughs> Would you want to eat lunch with her? I, I I think it would make it be too weird if I start drawing a little head coming out. But the fact that there's legs coming out, that's weird enough. <laughs> True to monster fashion. It's just unpredictable. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Okay. Um, use your imagination. Remember, you can make up anything you want. And let's review. This one, he reminds me of some cartoon bad guy. I don't know what it is, but you're right. I could put fingers up here. This is a fingernail in cartoon fashion. Do you see that? And here's his big thumb right up here in cartoon fashion. And he is holding up his cell phone over here, and there's that other part of the arm. And um, maybe he's calling for his henchman to come help him. That's possible. He's planning plans and scheming schemes and plotting plots via cell phone. Okay. <laughs> they can be silly. They can be weird. They can be something you, it reminds you of something. He's maybe a werewolf, maybe she's a frog. Okay, use your imagination. It could be anything that you want it to be. That's the, the most beautiful part about art. And to uh, kind of segue into some of the announcements here, Miss Linda, are we all finished up? Yes. Just want to make sure I don't want to cut you short. I'm going to cut anybody home short either because this is some good stuff that she's, she's giving out to us. But uh, to kind of come off of what you just said of however you think it should be that's exactly how it should be and uh and with monster making with any kind of art making any kind of mark making that you happen to be doing you know whatever you decide it to be that's exactly how it should be uh, because you're the creator you're the maker you're the one that is in charge and calling the shots so whatever it is you did a good job okay make sure you send us your work. We want to see your monsters. We want to see if you decorated Easter eggs, if you did chicks, if you're making the Easter sign, the lettering, the block lettering, whatever it is, we want to see it. So make sure you send us your work. Take a picture of you with your work. Give us your name and your age if you feel comfortable. And we're going to make a slideshow and we're going to put that up in the museum as soon as we're open to the public. It's going to scroll through the museum monitors and you're going to get to be, have a chance to be in a museum. We want to see what you're doing out there. Make sure you tune in tomorrow and join us at Pigeon Hill Studio. We're going to be live streaming from 1 to 2 with Miss Mary Pat Bean guiding us through finishing off those paper mache projects that we started last Tuesday. So you want to have your paper mache dried and you want to have crayons, markers, stickers, anything that you can have that you have around the house you can use to decorate or embellish your paper mache and she'll step you through um, how you can make those finished off and if you want to add to them or if you want to add anything additional. So make sure you tune in tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday again is the illustrated story time. 
Thursday we'll be sewing masks. That's going to be a joint project between adults and kids because we are going to add tags of encouragement from kids. Um, so you could participate with just the sewing of the mask or participate with just the tags or do both, however it works out. And we'll have a donation box at the um, Southern Allegheny's Museum of Art in Bedford, the porch. There will be a place to drop your masks off on the porch so that I can then get them to the medical professional community and to the hospitals that need them. Um, and Friday will be music makers. So don't miss the rest of this week. Let us know what you think, guys. If you're enjoying what you're seeing, please comment, please share, please let everybody that you know who might enjoy or take some, have some fun with making monsters or might be interested in donating the masks, share, 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 and let us know what you think. Give us some comments, some feedback. We're really interested to hear what you're thinking, your thoughts and ideas, and if there's a project that you have in your mind that you'd like us to guide you through, or it might be a subject that we share with everyone let us know, give us some feedback. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you had a good time. I hope you make lots of fun monsters and you share with us and we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye.